Here we are at Grand Farm. My name is Alfred Grand. I am an organic farmer and entrepreneur uh, from Austria. We are here in the east of Austria, in the region Wagram. And uh, we are working on uh, approximately 90 hectares. Uh, and uh, we have a, a mixed system, so we have uh, arable fields, we have some grassland for our horses, uh, but we also have a market garden where we grow vegetables. We also have uh, agroforestry systems and here you can see in the background uh, we are now standing in an agroforestry system uh, as we also call wind hedge or soil protection hedge or even multifunctional hedge and uh, what we we are doing here is we're doing research and demonstration we use uh, a series of different agroecological methods here on the farm so we start with uh, converting to organic in 2006 then we have a wide uh, crop rotation that we use. We implement cover crops. We uh, conduct reduced tillage. So we work uh, as a standard method only four centimeter deep on our farm uh, with our tillage tools. Uh, we uh, use uh, mixed seeds uh, nowadays, uh, lentil, barley and fields flax, for example, or chick beans and, and fields flax, for example. What we established over the years is uh, a redus, uh, reduced uh, tillage methods, uh, like uh, four centimeter deep only. But this is only possible if you reduce your tire pressure, for example. So we adapted our, we can adapt our tire pressure easily with a very simple, very cheap method. It's only 250 euro, and 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 you have the same results as you get from a 5,000 or 7,000 euro unit. So we reduce, we, we try to uh, have uh, lightweighted uh, tractors, use uh, our main tractor only has 100 horsepower and it's four tons and, and we still can do the, the 90 hectares on the farm. We always try to uh, implement cover crops as soon as possible and as much as possible and uh, we try to reduce uh, the crops that produce uh, animal fodder uh, and we try to increase the crops that produce uh, human food. Uh, so, so these are all things that uh, where, we, where, we, where we try to increase biodiversity, where we, we try to adapt for climate change, where we try to mitigate climate change and uh, to, to do positive things on society. And, and on the planet. With agroforestry, it's quite a uh, super interesting system because what we look at Grand Farm, we are searching for sustainable systemic solutions and agroforestry is a very good example on that. Uh, when you put, uh, what does it mean agroforestry? In my understanding, it's bringing back uh, uh, bushes and trees in, a, in the arable land. So here in our area we have, uh, have very good air, arable land but there is a lack of structures. So there, there is a lack of trees, it's only, only, only fields. So what we did is we planted 1.3 kilometer of these uh, agroforestry strips and uh, what we can see is uh, a systemic approach. So what we do is we, we collect, uh, we suck carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere with this uh, photosynthesis from the plants and we store the carbon in the wood and in the soil. We reduce erosion, so wind and water can no longer blow away or wash away the soil. Uh, we uh, adapt to climate change because uh, when these trees grow up we have heavy winds here in our region and that reduces the wind speed and when you have reduced wind speed you also have reduced evaporation. So we save water on the, on the fields nearby when we have an agroforestry system installed in the, in the, in the location. But we also reduce or stop the loss of biodiversity because in this area you have to imagine the trees and the bushes, the flowering, 
So you get all the beneficial insects, you get all the pollinators here, they have a habitat and they, we pr provide food at the same time. And the same is true for, for wild animals uh, like birds or, or other animals which have a habitat here and also food. So it's a very systemic approach, but we also want to see an economic benefit from this area. So we will put laying hens in here to produce eggs. And uh, we also have bees here from a neighbor. So we can have an additional benefit, but we also collect some fruits here. So we have additional benefits uh, for us. Hedgerows are also really important uh, um, connectors between uh, nature reserves. Um, if we don't um, have hedgerows in the landscape, um, animals and plants cannot travel between um, natural habitat patches and the populations will uh, shrink um, a lot, uh, like we saw in the Krefeld study, where 70% of the biomass um, disappeared over 30 years. Um, so in order to sustain a healthy population, we need to connect the um, different habitats and hedges are really um, a good way to, do, to achieve that. Um, they connect forest habitats as well as if you have next to a hedgerow a grass uh, strip, you also connect grassland habitats with each other and uh, build um, some kind of insect highway um, for the insects uh, to survive and also, yeah, um, also help the um, farmers with natural uh, pest control, for example. The more beneficial insects you have, the more biodiversity you get from a system, the less damage you have from pests, because the less room the pests have to dominate the system. Uh, if you have no biodiversity at all, so then it's really easy for a pest to, to explode in population and to, to make a huge damage. If you, if you have a good biodiversity, if you have a lot of players, a lot of stakeholders in an ecosystem, then it's much, much more difficult for, for the bad guys uh, to succeed. We are standing in front of our continuous flow vermicomposting facility and uh, it was just uh, the worms were just uh, fed a few minutes ago with uh, compost, the compost layer that we put on top of this uh, facility and we harvest at the bottom uh, the, the vermicompost or as we call it the biohumus. Here we just uh, put some food uh, on top of the earthworm composting area. So it's, uh, it is compost uh, mixed with other stuff and it's still quite dry, so we have to water it a little bit. But if we dig in to the area, then we can, we can grab some earthworms and we can show you how they work. So it's, the earthworms are the most important animals in the soil, but still they need all the other microbes. The, all the bacteria, the fungi, the protozoa, the nematodes and all the other critters that are running around here like uh, uh, springtails or anchitria or, or other animals. So it's an ecosystem. It's not only about earthworms, it's about the whole community and the whole biodiversity that makes this soil healthy. Yeah, 25 years ago I was uh, interested to make money and I was looking for a, for a business idea and I came up with vermicomposting and uh, later on I learned a lot uh, from scientists uh, about uh, earthworms and how soil works and the relationships between uh, plant roots and uh, uh, the soil microbes and, and the mineral soil. And so now the, we see the vermicompost as a tool for plants uh, and the plants feed the microbes which are in the vermicompost, in the biohumus, and, and so the, the plants can use these microbes as a tool to mineralize nutrients, to fight diseases, uh, to, to fight drought or, or bad uh, environmental conditions. So when I learned all that and tried to understand all of that, uh, that was, uh, the, was the beginning uh, where I, I went uh, more and more into the environmental friendly food production, into organic, into agroecological methods. 
And I always say I, was, I have a very basic education, but uh, I always say I was trained by earthworms uh, to you know, become the person that, that I am now, to, to get the knowledge and get the, uh, try, to, try to get the understanding, because we are still learning, learning and learning and learning. Uh, but uh, we have, we have a, a, a kind of uh, a knowledge now uh, that, that we can provide and, and uh, I think it's uh, super important to be aware about uh, soil health and the relationship to food quality. At Grand Farm we are not only looking for agroforestry as a systemic solution, but uh, the most systemic solution for us is market gardening. Market gardening is a system where you grow a huge variety of vegetable, herbs, fruits on small land, on small scale, uh, mostly by hand. Uh, there is nearly no machinery included, no tractor included, and you sell the product in the region. So uh, this is a way, if you don't have a lot of land, still to make a, a decent uh, turnover and a profit out of, uh, of, of little land and gives uh, a huge value not only uh, in production of food but also for other reasons. So we compared market gardening uh, according to the SDGs, to the Sustainable Development Goals of the United Nations and there are 17 of them uh, that we are hoping to achieve till 2030 and from these 17 with market gardening uh, we have an impact some more some less but still we have an impact on 11 out of 17 sustainable development goals so that's huge so uh, but why why does that happen because yes we are producing organic vegetable healthy fresh for the for the local region but we also creating jobs. We are also mitigating climate change here on this land. We are adapting to climate change. We are regenerating our soil. We are uh, making a healthy, clean water. We are uh, helping to, to have clean air. We are creating jobs. We are putting we are starting initiatives in the local region. In the rural area, we are bringing back young people into the rural area. We are reducing the average age in agriculture with when bringing in young people. We try to explain to people, to decision makers, to the society, what we do here. What is the potential that such a system has on society, on the planet, on the environment but also show the challenges that a, such a, a system brings with you. So the challenge of know-how, for example, you need a, a lot of know-how to, to make it successful. And we are still here not uh, profitable, r just from the production side, but we are, uh, we are planning to be profitable next year and uh, we are really uh, uh, seeing the development and, 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 and the improvements that, that we are making here with, uh, together with a great team of young professionals, professional gardeners. Yeah, here we can see the, the typical soil that we have here in this region. And uh, it's a Chernozem. And here you can see the topsoil, which is quite, uh, quite high. It's about 25, 30 centimeter. And here is the subsoil. But still, people think subsoil is not important. It's uh, super important. As you can see, there are roots everywhere. And even if you consider this is, uh, is a burrow from an earthworm. And it's covered with the biohumus, with the casting from the earthworm. So you see the different color from the subsoil, which is quite bright to the dark air area where the, the earthworm compost, the earthworm casting is growing. And here you can see such an earthworm casting which was uh, uh, penetrated by plant roots. And you see how the plant roots develop and how they grow into the, into the earthworm burrows. They really enjoy this area because they find everything that they need. They find more water, they find more nutrients, more microbes. So this is really important. Still, 
this soil was compacted because here this was a kind of driveway where we brought water in so we had a trailer with six eight tons and so this area is quite compacted and therefore i want to show you just nearby uh, on the right side where we have uh, plants grown pepper and zucchini uh, and we had a mulch, a layer of organic mulch, uh, which was uh, uh, lucerne hay, or which is lucerne hay. And I want to show you the difference between the structure of this soil and the structure of the beds. It's very close. And if we step in here, we can see there is a mulch layer of lucerne. And if we dig in here you can already see it's quite soft and if we take out the soil you can see there is a lot of roots a lot of room and if you check up Wikipedia for example the definition for soil is 50% of the soil is air and this is nearly like this so you can see a lot of holes a lot of pour a lot of air pores and this is important and you can see you can really uh, easily break it up and have a lot of room for roots to grow and and a very healthy soil setting you can't smell it because uh, it smells beautifully and that means the, the better the smell is, the more intense it smells like soil, the more activity from the soil microbes you have. So, you can see, you can make soil, you can improve your soil easily with agroecological methods. And one of these methods is uh, applying organic matter on the soil surface, applying a layer of mulch. And what you do, you prevent weed from germinating you feed your earthworms, you support your earthworms uh, with food, uh, you provide nutrients through your earthworms to the plants, but you also protect the soil from erosion. So water and wind cannot blow or wash away the soil surface, the topsoil, and you keep your soil uh, moist and reduce evaporation. Here at Vermigrant and also at the farm we are doing a lot of research. So one research example, especially with vermicompost, was uh, together with uh, Technical University Graz, uh, Gabi Berg. And, and what they did is they, they had an indoor plant and they uh, put uh, the, the microbes, the microbiome, which is the community of microbes, uh, in a specific area. And, and we took the, the, the microbiome from the vermicompost and made a compost tea out of it and they sprayed it on the leaves and poured it into the, into, the, into the pot, in the soil pot. So what they did, they put the plant into a clean room, a very, very clean room, and then they checked uh, the microbiome, so the community of microbes in the air and uh, on the leaf surface, but also in the root, in the soil. And what they realized is that uh, the microbiome uh, shifted slowly into the direction of the vermicompost so the, the microbes could establish themselves and what they consider now is to use such kind of uh, microbiome in hospitals uh, because in hospitals you have these uh, everything is, uh, is uh, disinfected and uh, hygienized and, and but you have specific microbes which are quite dangerous but which are resistant against this uh, disinfection material and now if you get other microbes in then they fight each other and it's much more difficult for these bad guys to establish when you have a good environment and a good diversity of microbes in the air and, and, and on the plant surface so that would help to, to reduce the impact of the bad, bad, uh, bad hospital uh, bacteria. And so we can, what we can learn from that is uh, that in nature, biodiversity rules everything. So there is always uh, one organism, one plant, one microbe that can fill the room, fill a space. And, 
And this is super important because uh, then not one species can dominate a complete ecosystem, but it's always a mix of different, uh, and, and it's a diverse mix of different uh, organisms, and that makes an ecosystem healthy. Comparing the conventional approach with pesticides, mineral fertilizer, heavy tillage, monocropping, and even GMO, for example, to agroecological methods, smaller scale, more landscape approach, more systemic approach, reduced tillage, organic fertilizer, crop rotation, cover crops, implementation, flower strips, agroforestry. So all these agroecological methods. I think there is, there is uh, no reason and no way to still go the conventional way. I think it's if we want to have a future on this planet, if we want to have a sustainable food production system, if we want to see a more systemic approach, there is only one way, and that's the organic, that's the agroecological way to grow food, to provide jobs, to support the environment, support biodiversity, protect the environment.